One, two, three, go. So all my name is Rick and alongside me today for this cast of the game two is Ben Vomerman. If I got that right. More or less. It was better than the right. second time. <laughs> better than the first time. That's all that works. I need to go back to English, apparently. Anyways, guys, hello and <laughs> welcome to the stream as Rook said. We are in the second game of uh, Kick vs. Millennium and right now it is Millennium that's leading this uh, best of three uh, match <laughs> with one lead and they are, we are already into the game and we can see that Millennium they have built more or less the same comp as they had in the last game just switching out the fresh for an Alistar and taking Shen for a case instead and the, the thing about this team composition is that they have a lot of peeling for their carries in the Oriana and the Kalista, but if um, someone like Joko doesn't build a warrior enchantment like it didn't do in the last game, then I, I, Millennium could potentially end up not having that much damage and basically just run out of damage. Exactly, but one thing you gotta point right away is Hans is in a little bit of a CS deficit, and he's only reason he's in that is he's having a little bit of a trouble farming against Kepe because last time he had a nice comfortable lane to soak up all by himself with Masterwork. He's finding himself in a lot of trouble early on. Oh, but the chase is in the mid lane putting down a lot of damage on so pretty but nothing really mattering except that you have to draw Joker's attention to the mid lane. As you were saying, yeah, Hans is starting to fall a little bit behind in terms of farm. He did have an easier time farming in the last game as they did a lane swap. Now, Joker's actually coming from behind and we could have a team fight here in the bottom lane. Exactly, and Joker's just waiting for the correct moment to go in, and that moment is right now. Oh! Marcus is going to go ahead and get knocked up and headbutted back. He's in a lot of trouble. Lantern not going to be taken, but he does provide some protection for Kepe. That's first blood going over to Hans. Yeah, first blood going over to Hans, and now, like in the last game, Millennium, they have built their team composition around having Hans in a good, comfortable position with a lot of power spikes and a good itemization course in the mid game. Now, with that first kill and the CS lead, he's, uh, he's getting there. Now, they're diving Kepe, but Chase is also in the bottom lane. Yeah, they gotta be careful. Masterwork basically just suiciding himself. That's a kill going over to Kepe. Is Kepe's gonna go ahead and even off the kill participation for himself? Uh, yeah, so Kepe gets the, the kill participation, as you said. And now, with, uh, with the CS, uh, he was behind. The, he's not really that far behind anymore, as Hans was forced to go back. And that uh, effort from Millennium to get hands rolling didn't really matter in the end because, as you said, the masterwork ended up suiciding. And now uh, you can say that Hans he still got that gold and the resources going for him, so his uh, itemization will not be delayed. It will actually be faster in this game. But Kepe is still going to be there with matching damage. Exactly, and I think the one. Big strong powerhouse pick for kick is Zico on the victor. Victor is just such a amazing champion at dealing such mid to late game burst damage and just being able to deplete people's health bars right away. That combined with Truck Selects on the Akram is just a huge advantage to pop gravity field into a chaos storm, <laughs> into an onslaught of shadows. Just the thought of that alone is mind boggling. Uh, and the thing about it is also, in the last game, Seiko played in Anivia and he fall, fell behind in uh, CS, so picking up Victor against Pretty, who's also playing Oriana like in the last game, Victor is able to deal with Oriana in so many more ways as Seiko, now with that Victor has more damage, he has um, more CC actually, and it, he's also able to deal so much more damage with fewer items, so his uh, mid game. Oh, wait, actually, Seiko! And Joko gonna go ahead and have the gas arm brought onto him. A lot of damage coming on to Zico. And in comes FaZe with the State United. No one being dropped just quite yet, but Kepler's found himself in a really bad situation. Beautiful flay coming out from Ruxus as 
The members of Millennium's bot lane are in quite a bit of trouble, and yes, they are! Masterwork is about to get dove on completely by every member as the chase picks them up. A kill and kick, just devoting so many resources from the teleport from Truxlex, and just a lot of flashes coming out that were burnt to pick up the kill, but only one flash burned on the side of Millennium. And with the domination over the Dragon area that they got from that kill over on Masterwork, they oh wait, Joko, can you steal it? Teleport is coming. Gonna in. go ahead, come in. But it does not matter. Lachase picks up the kill. Pretty is right there. Pretty does pick up a kill on Lachase, and that's a rand coming out onto Zico as Hans picks him up a kill again. And Hans, the carry machine of last game, going seven and zero, is in the driver's seat again to be able to replicate exactly what he did last game. Awesome choice from Millennium to fight that. You know, nothing ventured, nothing gained, so they were able to pick up two kills. They did not get the dragon, however, but it's only the first dragon, and if you're able, if you're not, uh, if you're able to not to play against the the strategy that you used against your opponent in the last game, which was choking out your opponent and going for that fifth dragon, then you are in a fine spot because the first dragon doesn't really matter. It's all you you want the first and the fifth dragon, and then the third dragon is, is the only one that's really that important, but. It's the best trade for Millennium, and as they got a kill over to the two carries, then it couldn't be better in any other way, as this allows them to scale up faster. It's, it allows them to reach their power spikes in a um, in a faster tempo, and it, it all just adds up to them getting um, the pressure and, and the mid-game momentum in, in the swing. Exactly, and one thing you, you need to be mindful of, Kepe last game built a lot of magic damage, he got the Essence Reaver and then the Triforce as well, but he built magic pen boots and he also had a blasting one as well, so we gotta wonder if he's gonna do the same thing as well or if he's gonna realize that it didn't work out quite well and go for a full AP damage build. That could very well be the case. Now, Joko is switching to the mid lane. Yeah, beautiful shockwave as he's all disoriented. Zico is gonna go ahead and get taken down. Joko picks up the kill for himself, but Hans in a little bit of trouble. He doesn't have much support. His master work was off the river, but he rejoins as Hans is in quite a fine situation. I, I love the. The, um, the choice is coming from Millennium right now, Joko's not done quite yet. <laughs> Joko is not done quite yet, as he's gonna actually go ahead and offer Pretty the kill, but a beautiful Steam United coming out from Case to make sure Joko doesn't drop, as they're gonna go out and siege onto this mid lane and pick up the turret with ease. But going back to what I was saying, I, I love the, the choices that Millennium are making right now, they're aimlessly just focusing on shutting down Seiko. They they want to get pretty in in the same spot as he was in the last game. Ultimate from Victor's not going to do anything. Just try to shove pretty off the the tower. But as as I was saying, they are aimlessly just aiming at that mid lane and forcing Seiko into a bad spot, like in the last game. And you know they build a team around Hans and. You don't need to ha help Hans at all because he has two kills and he's also the one leading in the farm in the bottom lane, so just focus on that top lane and the mid lane. Exactly, and you know, Kay's a little bit behind in CS, but Jen is one of those champions where you don't have to worry so much about a CS lead as long as you have a huge team participation. And he's gonna go ahead and be picking up a beautiful build into this mid to late game. He's already got the makings of a Sunfire Cape. And that's just gonna do a lot of damage in the long run. Exactly, and it's also going to uh, help him be able to deal with the split push coming from True, true Clax. So, the, the Sunfire um, Cape is a item that you really need to get as your first item because it falls off later in the game. And, it, as I said, it's mainly just to deal with True, true Clax. Um, and it's also going to give him a, a pretty little power spike of armor in um, in the mid game as Seiko is still scaling and is is lacking behind in terms of um, damage. So we don't need magic resistance quite yet. 
And Fritis is also... He's also scaling very uh, fast-paced right now. He got his Rod of Ages already. It's completed faster than in the last game. And... You know, in the last game it was Hans that was the one carrying, and now it's it's pretty that's the one being fast paced, and you have to to deal with pretty for as kick. You have to focus your resources onto shutting down pretty just to deal with him in any way because he's going to be running out of control very fast, and Seagull is not going to be able to contain him. You have to hope for the best, uh, which is shutting down pretty, but you also have to prepare for the worst. Yeah, Joko can find himself in a little bit of a trouble, but he's going to go ahead and actually return some of the damage onto LeChase. LeChase has to go ahead and bounce out of there, but he's taking a little bit of damage from Victor. It's at that point where Victor, even though he's far behind pretty and just not really having much to scale up with, he's actually doing quite a bit of damage just due to the fact that Victor is such a heavy mid to late game champion. There, yeah, there is a lot of uh, base damage in his stat from uh, Seiko, and the, the, the problem is just he's going to run out of damage if he doesn't get any uh, power spikes rolling for him. And I, I'd like to go back to one of the points that I made in the in the early game, where I said that Joko needs to get a warrior enchantment in, in order to deal some damage if... Um, if Millennium are to, to not fall out of the, to not choke on their missing damage in this game. The, the thing is now that they are ahead, so they don't really need that damage quite yet, but it could still bite them in their butt in the, in the late game if uh, the game gets dragged out all the way out there, but they're going to, uh, to pick up the Rift Herald, and now with that Rift Herald being picked up, they, they get some more momentum going for them. They have now the super Rift Herald minions that are going to be able to push easier now they're going to apply that to the top lane exactly and you know pretty just didn't need that rift herald at all he's already pushed up the mid lane really far but here comes Zico and Truxlux is going to go ahead and engage already but Truxlux taking quite a bit of damage Joko going to have to go ahead and tunnel out of there Taze has to flash away you could see a Shadow Dash coming out just to protect him even more, but Joko, buddy, you are so low and pretty is also in a huge situation to get caught out. Three members of Kick. Beautiful rotations, but they're not able to pick anything up from this. Just really too much of a costly rotation as the, you know, you can't really spend those kind of resources because look, just Hans is able to pick up this bomb turret with ease. You're just leaving him all by himself to pick up arm and a turret as well. So, you know, when you're doing these rotations, you have to be really careful about how you spend your time on the rotation. Exactly. But the thing was also the kick. They were able to pick up the dragon. They did not give up a kill to uh, Joko and Case in the top lane. So, in the end, it ended up being a better trade for them. But then the tower got picked up by Hans, and then it all went over to the favor of Millennium once again, because towers are just so much better than dragons right now. You, this, the second dragon of the game doesn't matter, towers are ambient gold just lying around and waiting to be taken. And with Millennium picking up one tower, maybe getting a second here in the top lane, they're slowly getting all of that global gold over to their bank account. Exactly. But Hans is going to be quite careful. Zico in the dual lane of Kepe and Ruckus are going to go ahead and find themselves into the mid lane. But beautiful rotations from Bastorwork and Joko, making sure that Hans does not get taken out. They do not want a shutdown on Hans. I am, I'm not quite sure why you're sending Pretty to the bottom lane right now for Millennium. Pretty does not have any teleport at all. And Pretty's also the. Um, the wave clear from Millennium, so right now you're, you're at least drawing the attention of Kick to the bottom lane, which uh, just kills the siege attempt from Kick in the mid lane. And in, in that matter, it's actually a, a good rotation from Pretty. And the thing, I, the thing about Pretty also right now is that he's going for a death cap, and once he hits that death cap, his Power spike is going to be so huge because the, the thing about Oriana is you hit your power spikes at your two 
and free items, uh, the, the Phoenix on Holy Grail or whatever your mana item is going to be, your death cap and your void stuff, and that's two of the three items completed once he gets that death cap. And Seiko only has an abyssal scepter, he doesn't have a death cap or a void stuff quite yet, and he's not even close to getting it. And, and even with that abyssal scepter, the Rod of Ages is still scaling so much better for pretty. Exactly, but what can you do as Zico? You have to have that Abyssal Scepter with so much damage output from Pretty. You know, you need to be able to combat that some way in any form, and that's really all you can do. And, you know, Kick needs to be really careful about the next few team fights that evolve because, you know, one lost team fight, and they could be out of this game and out of the qualifiers. And they're going to have to. Hopefully requalify in the summer, unfortunately. Both teams very, very good, but only one of these is going to qualify for the finals. Both teams that qualify for the finals from each side of the bracket do make it in the second round. Not the open qualifier, but the actual qualifier itself. The yeah, Kick definitely don't want to give up the dream of reaching the Challenger Series quite yet. And to answer your question about what Seiko can do, he can rotate around the map, try to pick up some kills, try to get some more CS going for him, for, because right now, he's behind nearly 2,000 gold, 1,500 at the moment, and that's quite a lot. True like you have to be careful, but your team is there to back you up, and Kick could look for a fight here in the top lane, but the rest of Millennium is moving to the top lane as well, and hold on, ladies and gentlemen, we could have a team fight on my hands. We <laughs> do, exactly. A lot of damage being taken on the Zogo, and Pretty, Pretty is gonna go ahead and get shut down. That's exactly what Kick needed from this fight. Kevin picks up a kill. Kevin's gonna go ahead and pick up a double kill on the Ks. Meanwhile, Yoko, <laughs> buddy, you're in a lot of trouble. You only have a few HP left. A beautiful block coming out from Ezra oh! to make sure that he doesn't get killed. And a wonderful job from Hans to be able to get a kill not only but to be able to drag Master Arc out of that fight Joko he has so much to be thankful for Master Arc as he blocked a rocket from Kepe before Kepe was taken down and that would have surely killed Joko but that's a Rift Herald going over to kick and Truckalex picks that one up as they're gonna need to push something in as they really need some turrets badly but it was still misplay from Millennium as Hans wasn't there to help them in that team fight. Pretty was just so uh, much out of position. He shouldn't have been there at all. He had no uh, members there to peel for him if he was going to be hooked, and it just ended up costing Millennium three ki so two kills and uh, and a rift hell as well. So now they're just they are giving up some resources. They're still hit by. 5,000 plus gold, uh, 4,000, sorry, um, and now they will also pick up that f third tower, outer turret in the top lane, and they're, they're just getting all the aim build gold that's lying around, whereas Kick are getting nothing, and Kick are, f are forced to deal with the scraps of the jungle camps, and they can't even get that, because Joko, he's invading, and he's trying to... Like in the last game, systematically choke Kick out of this game. Exactly, and he's done so well at that already. Just cross map jungling has been a huge factor for Millennium on keeping Kick out of resource contention. But they're gonna go ahead and try and siege up this mid lane. But Trustlix does pick up a turret in the top lane. That's a huge one for them as that's their first Joko in quite a lot of trouble. And now Millennium are looking for their first rank of the game. Teleport coming in from Trulax. Yeah, Teleport does come in, but it's going to be possibly a little bit too late. There's a beautiful knockoff coming out from Masterwork. Dragon <laughs> does go over to Millennium, though. Yeah, a, tr a good trade-off for Millennium. They get the first rank of the game. That's really all they need in this game. Uh, of course, it would be nice to have the pressure of the fifth uh, dragon, but they don't need it too much. Millennium are looking for a fight. Uh, here comes the stand unite from Kays and it's beautiful one making sure Groko has plenty of health to live with. A lot of damage being scampered off around the map and Masterworks can go ahead and get thrown in and Cap is going to go ahead and get taken down by the cow Moo Moo he says as they're going to go ahead and just 
bully their way even further. Case picking up a kill on the Zico, and just a lot of damage coming out from Millennium. Kick does not really have a response for this. And Kick has no way clear with Zico being down. Case chasing the chase. <laughs> but, you know, Kick, they have, as, as, as I was saying, they have no way clear. They cannot deal with the seeds that Millennium was starting up. Oh, that was close. Oh but, they, but Millennium, they will be able to pick up two kills and get a tower as well. And now they are 8,000 gold, close to 8,000 gold ahead. And they're slowly getting a, a good grasp of this game. They, they had it going for them. Now the, the, the gold lead is also starting to develop a very big difference. And, you know, th this is all about Millennium's game to lose. Exactly, I mean, they got the door three-fourths of the way open to ending this one. It's just, can they open the door even more to take down that Nexus? And, you know, I think they have a shot to do it just based off of one more team fight. If they can find a team fight like that last one, they have the ability just to push on forward due to death timers increasing ever so slightly as we're approaching the 24th minute marker. But, now, the, the thing for a kick is that they... They should just play to their winning condition uh, right now, which is just continuing to deal with the sieges that Millennium are able to push out. You have Seiko, you don't have to fight, you can just wait with Seiko and Kepe, use your um, your wave clear to survive. You don't even have to be pu pushed so far up into lane, you don't have to start the sieges because you cannot fight. All you have to do is deal with the sieges that Millennium will start because now you're going to get uh, and a fight. beautiful four-man knockup, a beautiful shot wave from Nana as well. Joko comes in, picks up a kill on the Zico. Ans picking up a kill on the Lachese, and a beautiful stand. United came out from Kays to make sure that Joko did not drop as that engage was beautiful. And Kays continuing his engage into the mid lane as Chuckalex is going to have to go ahead and run away as fast as he can, but it does not matter. They're going to go ahead and pick it up. Have it end. Roxas is going to go ahead and get taken down. Four members to zero. A beautiful play coming out from Millennium. Like I said, all they needed was one fight. They're pushing on to the basic kick, and this looks like it could be a game. I'm not, I don't quite think it's going to be the game yet, as Seiko and Kepe is about to respawn. But going back to the point I made, you, you don't have to be that far pushed up as kick. You, you should just be... Standing under your tower, defending yourself, because all Millennium had to do was engage onto you with the Alistar or with Case, and it ended up causing them a lot of kills, a inhibitor turret, and an inhibitor. And now, Kick, they're just in such a bad, worse spot that they already were, and you know, start playing to winning conditions of clearing waves. That's all you have to do as Kick. You, you, there's no pressure of a fifth dragon all, it, all you have to do is as i said clear the waves and then defend the baron exactly and Zico has not had a really good performance in game one or game two either currently 0-4 you know you gotta wonder what's going through his head the mental struggle that he's facing right now knowing his team could be possibly limited in the next few minutes is a lot to bear just by the fact that you know you could be currently blamed for the cause of that, but Jogo couldn't go ahead and get poked out a little bit by the Baron. <laughs> but Joko will also, once again, go in to steal away the resources of Kick, try and steal away that red buff, and he's going to make it a successful steal now. Rooks is the one being focused, and we're going to have a team fight, ladies and gentlemen! We do, exactly, and Trucklock's taking quite a bit of damage from those three. He's got a lot of spares in him. Meanwhile, Joko, he is getting caught between a rock and a hard place. He's still alive, barely, from the command to protect, and Hans takes down Rux. A lot of members of Kick are falling. Kaze picks up a kill on Lachez. I'm losing my voice. This is going insane. Joko picks up a kill on the Kepe. There's just so many kills coming out from Millennium this game. It's so hard to keep track of them. This looks like it could be the end of Kick's run through the Open Challenger Series qualifiers. Hats off to Millennium as they're going to qualify for the finals of this Open Challenger Series qualifier. And a beautiful game, but a shockwave at the end just for a little BM. Why not?
they might even pick up a kill, but they do not, as they just decide to end this game, and that's GG Millennium! There's an absolutely face-rolling kick in those first two games. And once again, it's, it's all about Millennium, just playing to the winning conditions of getting pretty and hands ahead here in the early game. Like in the last game, they got ahead in the early game, they started to slowly choke kick out, we're not giving them any resources. And the, the real problem from kick was that they got none of the ambient gold that was lying around. They got no towers. So it was just a matter of Millennium getting so much gold, whereas kick got nothing. Exactly. And, you know, a lot of damage came out from pretty much every member of Millennium, all of them doing between 10 to 15k. And Zico, even though he was 0-4, he was the highest damage dealer, but unfortunately with the chase, and Truxlux were not able to do quite a lot. You know, that comp of relying so heavily on your Victor and your Corky to be able to carry, but, you know, not being able to provide any more damage to back him up is, you know, really crucial. And beautifully executed game from Millennium, like I said. And best of luck to them in the Challenger Series. I have every bit of confidence that they could soon be, most likely, an LCS team come summer split. Very, yeah, definitely. Very well played by Millennium, and also very well played by Kick. They did put up a great fight. However, guys, this is going to be everything from Rook and I. So, make sure, if you like the cast, subscribe to my Twitch, my Twitch channel, Twitch slash Ben Lamaran. You can find both Rook and I over on Twitch, or, fa sorry, not Twitch, uh, Twitter and Facebook as well. And we'll see you guys very soon. Bye. Bye.